evening, everybody, and welcome back to Poly Live. Uh, alongside Ashley Ivanka again, I'm Michael Gershio. Welcome back for another episode of your favorite live webcast show. Uh, exciting episode tonight, Ashley. And I've said that probably every time. Uh, the second time I was lying, last time I was half serious. This is the real deal. It is. You I can't so wait right. to talk to who we have on the show tonight. We have representatives from Engineers Without Borders. We're also going to hear from someone uh, from Student Library Advisory Council. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm so stoked. Uh, before we get into it too deeply, I know Ashley's like dying to tell everyone. Ashley, what happens tonight at midnight? It's a national holiday. I turn 21. It is her birthday, everybody. Let's hear it for Ashley Yvonne's yeah. birthday. Yeah. Now, for our continued long-term viewers, you know that Ashley turned me down uh, on Valentine's Day a couple months back. A couple, whenever it was, I cried so much I forgot when it was. I will not be in attendance at her party this evening. Yeah, so, so you're missing deal out. deal with that. Okay. Uh, but for our viewers at home, remember, it is a live web show. Please send us in your questions. Um, we'll get those answered on the show. Or if we can't answer them, as always, we'll make something up and make a joke out of it. Um, but bring your questions. We want to tailor the show to you at home. Um, but without further ado, who's our first guest, Ashley? You know what? I'm going to say it's a student, Evan Borgeson, from Engineers Without Borders. Let's hear it for uh, Come Evan. Come on down. Hey, Hello, Evan. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I'm excited can to be you, here on the show. We are excited to have you. Now, before or as you start, can you explain what it is that Engineers Without Borders does as a club? Well, um, we're a community-driven uh, developer. Well, what we do is we go into communities. We have three projects. That one's in Thailand, another one's in India, and the third one's in Nicaragua. Right on. We're working on putting a fourth team together right now. So, for anybody that wants to join, live member, live members of our audience, <laughs> the fourth team is being put together right now. So, check that out. Um, what we do is we go in these communities and we ask them what they need. So, uh, it's important to that we put together something that the community is actually going to use. A lot of charities will go in, they'll maybe put in a well, but maybe that's not what the community really needs. Yeah. Um, we go in, we talk to the community, we make good connections, and then we put in something or we help put in something that the community is really going to enjoy and use. So, for example, our uh, Thailand project, we did water quality and water purification. So, we went in, they're saying they had a lot of problems with uh, waterborne illness, people were having diarrhea and things like that. Not good. So, uh, yeah, they're not good. Um, we talked to the health clinic there and they said that they think it's from the water. So. What we did was did, we did some water testing. We found that there's a lot of coliforms in the water, which are not good. Um, and so we went from there. We came back here to Cal Poly, got all our good brains together, talked to some faculty, and uh, we put together a plan. And that plan was to use what are called slow sand filters to purify the water. Basically, the water just goes through a bunch of sand and comes out the other end pretty clean. That's awesome. So are these teams that you send to all these different places just Cal Poly students and faculty? Or is it different Engineers Without Borders clubs at other schools too? Well, our chapter, of course, is just Cal Poly students, faculty, and then we employ the uh, expertise of professional engineers. So every time we travel, we'll have maybe like five students, a faculty advisor, and a professional engineer that can give us their guidance. And it's really because of those people that uh, things get done. That's awesome. So how would students get involved in your club? Well, we have meetings every Monday at 7 o'clock in the back of the library in those uh, computer labs that you know and love. And then also every other Wednesday we have a meeting at 6 o'clock in the Advanced Technology Laboratories. Uh, there's also a website that we have. It's ewb-calpoly.org. And uh, it's a great website, so check that out, viewers at home. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you have any upcoming events for your club? We do. Um, in April, April 19th through the 21st, and also April 26th through the 28th, we have an event that's coming up. We're naming it Impact. And what we want to do is we've given a lot back to these communities um, in Thailand and so on. But we really want to put something together for the local community that's here. And so Engineers Without Borders is teaming up with PG&E. And we're going to put together an event where we encourage Cal Poly students and community members to volunteer in our local community. So we've contacted a bunch of local nonprofits, and we have a bunch of events lined up for people to volunteer for. And we're really excited about it. We want 
all of Cal Poly come out. We've talked to a bunch of different clubs. I know we've talked to, uh, talked to orientation programs. So hopefully we'll be able to get a good turnout. Our goal is to get 5,000 total hours over the two weekends. And um, I'm really excited about it. And I hope that the Cal Poly students get excited as I am. That Perfect. sounds awesome. They I'll be there for sure. They all have a personal invitation out there. So yeah. there you go. You got a bunch. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, what's your favorite part about the club? Like, what made you want to join? Well, um, the first time I found out of the club, it was uh, at open house before I came to Cal Poly. It's one of the reasons Cal Poly really sold me was they had all these cool clubs, especially mm -hmm. Engineers Without Borders. And the people were just so nice. And um, they're so passionate about it. And that's really my favorite part is that everyone's so passionate about what they do. That's awesome. So that sounds like a really, really cool club. Like, do you have to be an engineer in order to do engineering? I was just going to ask that. I'm a college right business here. guy. I'm sitting here. Right like, here. can I do it? Is that allowed? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, actually, a lot of our students are non engineers. Very we cool. Have economics, business majors. We have bio majors. Bio majors are so important because a lot of stuff that we do is involving like bacteria and stuff like that. We don't know much about <laughs> that. Um, so, yeah, all these different majors is super important. Um, I know one of our. Uh, project managers is actually a chemistry major so um, it really doesn't matter as long as you're passionate and driven come out and we can use your help that's awesome so you have me liberal studies major super down to do this when would I go on this trip to Nicaragua well what you'd have to do is you would be part of the Nicaragua team first um, like I said before it's uh, about five to seven students would travel each uh, whenever we have a travel day coming up now they're not that often, but um, we go either during the summer over winter break or over spring break. Um, the Thailand team actually traveled for all of winter break this last quarter, and um, Nicaragua is leaving in like two weeks to go oh, to. Oh, all right. Well, I don't have that much time. Pack your bags, Ashley. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming out My and pleasure. talking to us. I know that the audience is pretty stoked about. Let's all go to Nicaragua. Two weeks, guys. Two weeks. <laughs> Thank so you. That sounds great. It sounds awesome. As, I right. mean, everything that we talked about on the show. I mean, fun. obviously, obviously. I'm going to go to Thailand, go to Nicaragua. Done. You know, we got two weeks. Just rely on some of those bio majors and engineers to help me out. I yeah. Can how, much, how much it costs? I'm going to bond you know? with the kids. Throw a little econ in there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, I also heard that upcoming we have a, an event next we month. We do. Yeah. The month of April, I the think. The month of April. We're thinking the same thing again. I think we are. Yeah. Okay, everyone, uh, Cal Poly's Pride Center has Pride Month coming up in the month of April. As you may have guessed, it's a month long. Ashley, what are some of the things that the Pride Center is putting on for this month long event? Okay. They have trivia, workshops, karaoke, which obviously sold me because I'm an amazing singer, um, movies, and socials. So, and I can just go to all of these you as a just, Cal Poly student? You can just go to all these faculty, staff, students, all of them can go to these I probably, events. I probably got to bring a little bit of money, though. Hey, no, actually, in. all of the events are free with the exception of Pride Prom. Oh, worth it, though. So, Pride Prom. Dust off a little blazer. and uh, I, Okay, if you're looking at me as if, oh, Pride Prom is good. You shut me down on Valentine's I, Day. Okay, but then you insulted no me about not that. going to my birthday, so I think we're even, so now it's my turn to ask you. Okay. Is that, uh, is that a... Does it happen? Live audience, a little round of applause if it's going to go down. Yeah. I'll see you there. What if I have questions along the way? Where can I go to maybe get more information? You know what? This? They have a website, which I'm actually going to read verbatim from this paper to make sure I get this correct. We have http dot dot above each other slash slash student life okay, dot calpoly.edu slash pride. And that's where you can get all your questions answered. All your questions. Find out events, times, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff. Right on. Done, done. Month of April, everybody. Pride Month. See brought to you by the Cal Poly Pride Center. All right. If we're ready, I'm trying to bring our next guest on. Let's do Talking it. Talking to him before the show. Awesome dude. Has some great information for us about the library, about how students can use it. And he's coming to us from Student Library, library Advisory Council. Help me, everybody, in welcoming Tuck to the stage. Woo! <laughs> Tuck, how are we doing, man? Good. How are you doing today, guys? Real good. Good, good. So, Tuck, you're from Student Library Advisory Council. And for someone like me who doesn't know exactly what that is, can you tell us you know, what you all do, uh, maybe who, who's uh, involved with this council? Uh, yeah. Basically, the Student Library Advisory Council is kind of the advocacy group of students from the library. 
We're made up of representatives from all the different colleges, from different areas on campus. We have uh, some members from fraternity life. We have a member from this, um, the Librats who kind of work in the library. And we kind of work to kind of gauge student interest in what the library is doing. The library has a lot of great programs kind of in the back, in the back phone of things they want to do, but they only show if students really want those things, or those things the library has no idea the students need. So all kind of job is kind of gauge student interest, figure out what students want, and then kind of relay the information to the library and make recommendations along those lines. Very cool. And so we were talking before the show, what are some of the kind of programs or things that have um, been new to the library that maybe were sparked by student interest? Um, I mean, what's really good about Slack is that there's great synergy between us and the library staff. You know, they really respect us and they really kind of listen to us and really help us out. Um, one of the big things is the library was thinking about adding outlets and that was a big thing that actually students wanted. So we will, along with the library, helped add about a thousand new outlets last year oh to the library. That's so. huge. That's I can huge. never find an outlet when I go yes. to the library last year. No, that was a big thing was people, well, it was tough for you during know, finals or midterms that there was just not enough space sometimes right. for the library. So yeah. and those outlets really helped with that. We really helped with kind of change up kind of the vibe in the library. There was one thing people really wanted was they wanted to make the library a little bit let's let's say friendly or in terms of kind of working and sitting there. So they added some new like couches, some new furniture. Mm -hmm. We helped clean up the arboretum, make that look a lot more colorful. And really in terms of just stuff like that, we really just tried to there's a lot of things the library is working on, but through us we can kind of bring all perspective and kind of just show the library that yes, these are things we should be working on and here's some ways to do that and then from there they can listen to that and kind of go their own way depending on costs and what they feel. Of course. And so you mentioned, you know, finals week and midterms. I don't have to remind any Cal Poly students that finals are coming up. Um, what are maybe some recommendations of ways that students can better use the library kind of in studying for finals and preparing for those big tests? Um, yeah, in terms of things the library has that can help you, um, we have a lot of things you can check out that you wouldn't know, mo normally think you check out. We have laptops you can check out, we have iPads you can check out, Kindles you can check out. Um, one really cool thing is going on is that the weekend before finals, we're going to have increased library hours. Friday and Saturday before finals, the library is going to be open 24 7. Awesome. So you can get to stay there. Yeah. In terms of um, Sunday, it's going to be open until 2 a.m. 24 hour, we're always open then. Yeah. There's some other things you can check out at the library. We have some bowl games you can check out. The Librats will be there with some assistants, kind of ask them things. In terms of if you're working, if you want to take kind of a break, there's a lot of things in the library you kind of do. There's the new data studio where you can do stuff like GIS maps, um, some statistical work, if you want to take a break, or want to work on maybe like projects you're working on, mm -hmm. the end of finals, those are special collections, which is kind of like the history area of Cal Poly, well, we have a lot of stuff that comes from slow, yeah. it goes into their ancient like past documents, a lot of fun like materials, all the old Mustang dailies are archived there, like it's a nice Very little nice. fun place to take a break, so the library really works to have both of a academic side, but also a very fun side to make sure that student, students' experience within it is, is the best it can possibly be. Yeah, I know for me personally, it's my favorite spot to study here on campus. I, you know, I live off campus, but it's hard to study sometimes. You have like TV and distractions or your roommates. So I love coming to the library. And like you mentioned, it's kind of, it, you know, it doesn't feel like a spot where you're kind of being punished and have to study. It's, you know, I like going there. So you usually cool. run into people that you know and, you know, do a little chit-chatting. We can get your work done. So you it's, I think it's great that, you know, the university is listening to students and then putting into action what they really want. No, definitely, and and what's great too is that all the people that work with Slack, all librarians, the Dean of the Library, Anna Gold, they're all really into Slack. They already understand that what we, how much we do, how much they actually, like, how much we actually kind of gauge student interest, and they really respect for that, and they really kind of let us do our own thing. You know what I mean? As a student group, we're a really fun group. We do a lot of great work. We have a lot of things kind of in the park right now. Mm -hmm. We just finished our Slack survey, which is a survey we sent out trying to gauge student interest in different things that the students need. And we just got that back, and we got an amazing tone up like last year. We're starting a photo contest in the next few in the next week or two, which is going to be huge. I mean, we're just doing a lot of little things. And what's great is the library staff is is just super respectful of us, super open, and really just wants us to do our best job. And then through that, we can kind of combine to do the best job for our students at the end of the day. Exactly. So if I'm a student on campus and I'm interested in maybe getting involved with Slack, I heard you guys have kind of an application process coming up? Uh, yeah, actually, in terms of getting involved in Slack, we meet um, every Thursdays, 12 to 1, in the library in room 501 on the top floor, kind of a long walk, but <laughs> elevator not Probably bad. worth it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's good exercise, you know. But in terms of in terms of recruitment, right now we're recruiting members for next year. We're looking for members specifically for from the College of Business, the College of Arts, um, the College of Engineering, the College of Architecture, and then a grad student. And we're also looking for some other members if you want to apply, so, and in terms of that, in the next few weeks, we're going to have some stuff on the web, on the library website. Also, some stuff on just some flyers hung up about how you can do that. It's not too hard. Very easy application process. 
And if you have any more questions about Slack, if you go into the library website and go to the About section on the website, down there on one of the drop downs, it will say Student Library Advisory Council, and there you can find out about more about who won, who's on the council, who kind of what we do, some of the stuff we've done, our charter, our constitution, all that fun stuff. So. Right on. Well, thanks so much, Tug. This is helpful. I mean, uh, if you're in the library anytime between now and the end of finals week, you'll probably see me. I've uh, I got a lot of work to do. Let's just put it that way. So, <laughs> also let me take advantage of it. Thank you for coming in and chatting well, with us today. Yeah. Big round of applause Thank for Tuck, so everybody. Much. Thank you. This is perfect. I tell you what, I learn more about the library and about the resources that I can use as a student every year I've been here. I'm about to graduate, and I'm just learning about things like you can rent out laptops. I don't have to bring my laptop to campus. Now they have more outlets. They have the, the coffee shop, 24-hour yeah. study room. Yeah. There's really no reason not to get straight A's. That's very valid. You know and but don't tell my parents that. <laughs> and now that they're uh, open 24 7 right. for those last two days before finals week, we can finally have that 4 a.m. study date thing. Yeah, let's make it happen. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Now, Ashley, I've heard uh, that we are about to give away a shirt to our live studio audience. Oh. And we are down here in the Sequoia, Sequoia Study Lounge, so if anyone's upstairs, you've got just a little bit of time to race down here and try to get involved. But uh, there up. we go. Okay. okay. <laughs> So we're giving away a t-shirt to our live studio audience. Let's hear it one more time from our live studio audience, everybody. Oh. We love having them come out every time. They're a lot of fun to hang out with. I believe we're picking a name. Uh-oh. Oh, welcome Brandon to the stage, everybody. Woo! You put a bunch of my names in there, right? Of course. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Drum roll, please. Michael Gershow. I'm kidding, it's Jacob. Jacob, everybody. Woo! Collect yeah, come on up. Get a little FaceTime. There you go. Hey. Hi, Mom. Hi, This Dad. is Jacob, everybody. Jacob, do you live in Sequoia? Yeah, I do. Right on. So you must be a student here, I hope. Yep. What are you studying? I'm studying city and regional planning. How's that going? Good. I really yeah? like it. What's your favorite city and or region in the United States? But you like Ooh. to plan. Yeah. Oh, such a good question. Well, right now, I am writing a 10-page paper on New Orleans, so I'll say that's my favorite. <laughs> Very cool. You, you should send it to the city and then see if they'll give you, like, gifts and free food and stuff. Mardi Gras beads. You know? That's all, that's all you need. I think yeah. you just missed it though, right? Yeah. yeah. It's never too late. Next year. It happens. Yeah. It's still going on at Disneyland, so just shoot on over there. Oh, well, congratulations great. on the big win, Jacob. Great. And uh, we'll get you your, we'll get you prize after the show. Round of applause yeah. for Jacob, everybody. Well, I certainly learned a lot this episode, for sure. Oh, Slack, yeah. we have engineers without borders. I apparently am going to go to Nicaragua in two weeks. Mm -hmm. so. We got the Pride, uh, Pride Month coming up. Month yeah, of we got prom. Yeah, it's going to be a busy time. It's going to be busy. And I'm so glad that we had the Sequoia audience out there. Woo! Rocking it for there us. There you go. You guys are so great. So uh, our next episode. We get to do another one? We do. Mm. I'm not sure what it is, but it's gonna be probably not this quarter though. Probably not this spring quarter. quarter yeah, we have spring break coming up. Mm -hmm. Really excited for that. What are you What are you planning on doing? I'm thinking about going to Yosemite for a weekend. What? I will be in town hanging out a little bit. I have a job in town, so okay. Can't go too far away. What about you? Yeah, I got you. I am planning on eating for half of it and mm -hmm. then sleeping for the rest. In that order? Yeah. That probably makes more sense. Yeah, huh? I'm I'm expecting the food corner to happen, so I gotta sleep. Planning it out. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you do have more questions or anything else you'd like to get involved with, check out our website or feel free to email us at orientation at calpoly.edu. Our next episode, we're looking to be middle of spring quarter, maybe like the fourth week. So be sure to tune in uh, around then for episode five. Yeah, there you go. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we did. All right, everybody. Take it easy. <laughs>